Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for gear, tips, inspiration, anything that you need to take your photography to the next level. My name is RC, and this week I wanted to talk to you about camera profiles. Now, it's probably not the sexiest thing in the world to consider, but it is something that can help you when you want to be able to get that picture a lot closer to what you saw behind your camera. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we talked about seeing in black and white, and we talked about manipulating the preferences in your camera. If you haven't seen it, go back and take a look at that episode. But all of it is all predicated on looking at the back of the camera and saying, all right, well, this is a little flat, and changing a mode and going into vivid or portrait or landscape or something that you would have in the camera that would kind of juice up the colors. Here's the problem. You take all of those pictures and you bring those pictures back into your computer and you'll experience the exact same thing. Watch this. I'll double click on this picture here and as you zoom in and you make this picture bigger and you move over here, it'll wait, it'll wait, it'll wait for a second and then all of a sudden you'll notice that the colors change. Something changes. And you'll see a slight color shift. It's not as vivid as you thought it was from behind the camera. This is what's happening. The back of your computer, right, the back of your camera, when you're shooting it, has a little bit of a computer. And it processes these images. And it processes based on the secret sauce that a Canon would have or that a Nikon would have. So it makes its color, its sharpness, its detail, its contrast, and it applies that to the JPEG image. If you're shooting in RAW, however, you're making all of that control. But the camera still makes a small JPEG image to use as a thumbnail. And that's what you're looking at in the back of the screen of the camera. So when you go into Lightroom, that thumbnail loads by default. You spin a couple seconds. And then after that, all of that stuff gets zeroed out. And you're presented with a very straight look that you're going to have to tone later. Well, this would be very frustrating to a lot of people for a while. and. They wanted to get into a position where they could make it a lot easier to be able to get back to that original look. This is all you have to do. Inside of the develop module, you'll see that you have a section all the way down here called camera calibration. Inside of camera calibration, you'll see that there's an area here called process version and profile. What we're looking for is this profile section. If you click on this, you'll see that you have camera landscape, camera neutral, camera portrait, camera standard, camera vivid. So. The profiles that you will see here will be specific to the camera. So if you're using a Canon camera, you will see Canon profiles. If you're using a Nikon camera, you will see Nikon profiles. If you're using an Olympus camera, you probably will not see a profile. There's profiles for specific cameras, but not for all of the cameras. Now, in this case, we don't want to keep it at standard because standard is, well, it's just standard, right? Watch what happens when I move to something like camera vivid. And I'm going to zoom out so that you can see the difference here. This changes the property of the file. You're looking right here on this side. It's a lot yellower, right? I'm going to come back over. And in this section, I'm going to move it back to standard. See, it's a lot darker. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to move this to portrait. You see that in this case, it turns it brighter. So if you're looking for a specific look and you look at the back of a camera and you go, huh, this is something that actually I like this and you don't see that shift probably the easiest for you to, thing for you to do is when you import, go inside that camera calibration. Use that profile. You'll be surprised. It'll look a lot better than just a straight normal look. Now let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got Scott Kelby talking to us a little bit about some processing on the computer. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody, Photography Tips and Tricks. RC here. I'm here with Scott Kelby. What's going on, Scott? Uh, not much, man. Hey, so we've got another episode with you. So we had him here. We wanted to, you want to take this to the next level. Because he was watching. We were talking a little bit about uh, color profiles. And he's like, yeah. i got a really, really cool I'm not going to say anything. Tell me. Talk okay. to me about it. So we're going to use the same panel you were just using, the okay. color profiles panel. Okay. But I want to unlock a feature that's been gone from Lightroom. 
Okay. So back in Lightroom 3, um, there, were, there was a different set of math. So Adobe uh, had created some math, mm -hmm. and then in Lightroom 4, they made it better. They went mm -hmm. back and looked at a couple different sliders. Clarity was one. Mm -hmm. Because if you took the clarity slider and you really cranked it, you would get like almost a black halo around people and stuff. It would start, edges of things would start to get a, like a black halo around it, almost mm -hmm. like you put a black glow around them. Mm -hmm. And so, and people really like to crank some of these things. They like mm -hmm. to crank clarity way up. So uh, clarity was one, recovery was one. Uh, so w we have, new math today that we're using in Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5, and it's terrific. The mm -hmm. math is, is wonderful. Because what happened was, if, if you crank those too much, you'd get things like halos or other artifacts and just stuff that- look like fake HDR look fake HDR-ish okay. and stuff. But I gotta tell you, although today's sliders and the math is much, much better, <laughs> every once in a while, you wanna be able to crank that amp up to 11. You wanna be able to, to get some of those old effects back because they were, they were very extreme. So while today's, Lightroom 5 math and Lightroom 4 math is much better. They don't let you push the sliders as far. You can go all the way to 100 and you're like, but I sometimes need, I need to go more. More cabo. Here's the trick on how to get the old fill light slider back from Lightroom 3. Okay. All right. You're going to go down to that camera calibration panel where you were. Mm -hmm. Well, first I want to show. All right. So now we have the shadow slider. All right. right. So this is what replaced fill light. Mm -hmm. And if you crank it all the way up, look at the image here. If I crank it all the way up, it does open up the shadows. To a certain degree. Yeah, but doesn't you, it looks like it needs to, uh, uh, I need to go further, I need right. more. So here's what you do. We're gonna scroll down here, camera calibration. We're gonna go right above where you were, where this says profile, go a little further up. And it shows you, you're using the current math. Mm -hmm. 2012 is not the current year, but it is the it most is the current, current math, math that we right. have. If you click and hold on that, you can go back in time to 2010 math. Mm -hmm. When you do that, believe it or not, if you go back to the basic panel, there's the controls from 2010. And look, yeah. there's, there's the fill, fill light, light slider, right? Watch how much further I can take things with a fill light slider than I can with today's shadow slider watch. Whoa, <laughs> you're gonna open that's that thing. That's a lot more now. That's more than I really even want to go. But at least every once in a while when you get stuck in that situation where you've moved the shadows to 100 and you're like, it's just not enough, now you have a way you can do it. It's quick, it's easy, you just change your dropdown. Right. Yeah, yeah, just remember, <laughs> when you're done, change, change it, back. it back. Like once you move on to another photo, you're working on something else, at that point, you don't want to, you want to use the new math. And you want to use the new math almost all the time. This is where to go when you're running where the new math doesn't take you far enough. All right. And so you're going to be giving up a little bit of quality because then the quality, the new math, oh, it's sweet. But every now and again, when you need that Hail Mary. And, and this is one of those. So when you're done, just go back and just reset it and you'll get the new math. Perfect. We'll switch it to 2013. Hey, I have a mini tip. That's sure. It's string, Ooh, don't go to 2003, things were really bad then. Of course, the price of gas was much better. Okay, anyway, so 2012. This is just a little mini tip and it doesn't really exactly relate, but do you notice that, RC, and I know you noticed this because you know this. <laughs> if I go up to the top and I click on the basic panel, that all I see is the basic panel, all the other panels are collapsed. Mm -hmm. Well, my mini tip is, this is the way I like to, to work the most. This is called solo mode, which means only show me the panel that I'm working on now. Don't show me all these other panels I have nothing to do with. I'm tired of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and mm -hmm. scrolling. This way, see how they're all collapsed? Mm -hmm. So if I go down to lens corrections, boom, I only see that one and all the rest are automatically collapsed. The way you get to this is just right click beside one of the names. You have all these and just choose solo mode. Nice. And now, and you have to do this panel by panel. So mm -hmm. you, you have to go through Lightroom and set it a number of times, but solo mode, Solo moto. Solo moto. That's Spanish. Solo you know. moto. That's Spanish, by the way. Solo moto. <laughs> so uh, solo mode will will give you just it will just make your make your time in, in Lightroom more efficient, and you won't be doing as much scrolling around because you're only going to see the panel that you're working in. You only want to see the panel you're working in anyway. That's right. I like it. I like it. All right. Now before you go, I need to finish up the show. So oh, let's, let's get into finish this. the show. Now uh, Peachbit ebook deal. Go to peachbit.com slash KelbyTV. Enter in the code KelbyTV. You're going to get forty percent off. Album Moxie, the savvy photographer's guide for album design and more with InDesign. So if you're a wedding photographer, if you're a photographer and you want to be able to design an album using InDesign, Kara Pekanik has got the book that you're going to want to take a look at, and you can save yourself forty percent off on the ebook. Make sure you go to peachbit.com slash KelbyTV. Now. We're going to give away a book. This is a great book. We're going to give away a book. We're going to give away the incomparable Moose Peterson has got a book captured. 
right? Lessons from behind the lens of a legendary wildlife photographer. Pretty much, it's a brain dump of Moose's head. Yeah, and, and it's, it's great. thick. I it, mean, it's it is a little thick, but I got to tell you, it's it, good. It's beautifully laid out, and I think it's it's the best book ever written on the topic. Now, I have to give you a disclaimer. I, I kind of worked with Moose on this book, right. so it sounds like, oh, you're going to say that? Of course you are. But honestly, it's it's Moose. Every word of it's Moose. He nailed it. It's right. terrific. So one of you guys is going to win this. How do we do this? You're going to go to kelbytv.com. You want to be able to look for this episode. Find the most recent episode. Once you're there, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Give us your name. Give us your email. Tell us a website. We need solo mode. We you. need solo, we need solo mode for that. <laughs> all that scrolling. So and then leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see. Tell us what you don't want to see. This is your show. We want to be able to help you guys. So our producers are going to pick somebody, and one of you guys is going to win this book. Now. We also have to leave you with a website. Now, you had dinner with this person, so I figured I did, it was good I did it with Ken. to yeah. be able to do this. Ken Kamenisky. Yeah, he's make, got a beautiful site, good photographer. Make sure you go to Ooh. kenkamenisky.com. I like the way you can see some great stuff. That's Rome brought it back. HDR. That is Rome in HDR. That, that is the really Coliseum. Nice. So, and that thing was just made a few years ago. That's was brand, it? brand new in it. Look how it's crumbling. It's, it's poor construction. <laughs> but if you want to look at some great inspiration for travel photography, this is a place to be able to go. Thank you so much, Scott, for My coming pleasure. by. My pleasure. My pleasure, absolutely. And you brought two websites to, to actually take a look at to be inspired. So this is great. And thanks to all of you guys. Hopefully we see you guys next week here at Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care. Take care, everybody.